So this question looks like we have a system of equations, right? So anytime we see like, you know, two equations stacked on top of each other, we should think that it's a system of equations. And along with that thought, we should think, hey, well, when I have a system of equations, I am going to either use the process of elimination or substitution. Right, so that's what I'm thinking here. So then the question says, in the system of equations above, A is a constant, right? So A is actually a number. For which of the following values of A does the system have no solution? Okay, so here is really the hint that a lot of students miss. How does a system of equations have no solution? Well, so no solution means that both the x and y terms cancel each other out. So typically when we're using elimination, <clears throat> we want to cancel out only one term, right? Let's say we canceled out an x somehow. We'd still have y as part of our equation. We could then solve for y and then kind of backtrack and solve for x. Substitution is the same thing. We like isolate a variable, either x or y, plug that into one of the other equations, and then solve for the remaining variable. Hopefully that made sense. Hopefully you understand elimination and substitution. But for no solution, we can't use either of those methods because whenever we try, both the x and y terms cross out. So again, hopefully you've also at least had that experience where you've seen this happen. So how does that work? Well, if I have negative 3x plus y equals 6, and I have ax plus 2y equals 4, then what I am going to do here is say, well, if I were, if I were trying to use elimination, and let's say I was looking to eliminate the y value, I would just multiply this whole top by negative 2. So what would happen there? That would make this a positive 6x minus 2y equals negative 12. And I'd still have ax plus 2y equals 4 in my second equation. Now, when I went to do this, the whole purpose would be that I can cross out the y values, right? But what the question is telling me is that I have no solution, which means this a value must be negative 6, right? A has to be negative 6, because if A were negative 6, then not only would the Y value cross out here, but also my X value would cross out here. And that's exactly what it means, right, when we're told that there is no solution. So there's my answer, right? So in, in essence, it is I understand what I expect to get when I have no solution. I'm going to Proceed as if I were answering this in a traditional way, right? So I'm using elimination to isolate the, or to cross out the y value. And then I'm saying, hey, well, now I got to a position, just to rewrite it so we can see it clearly. Now I'm in a position where I can cross out the y value here. But remember, the x value is going to cross out as well, right? So that's how we find that a must be negative 6 in order for both those things to cross out, and therefore A is the answer.